Good morning and welcome to Church at Home, King's Church, Frodsham's Church Online. This is the 3rd of January 2021. Happy New Year. Um, last year was a bizarre and horrible year for some people, but we got through that. And um, let's thank God for it and look forward to a good new year. This week we've got some uh, worship music by Aird Birkbe. And then after that we've got Claire and Matt Hooper to bring some word to us. After that we've got um, some more music by Big Push. I think Hannah's involved with that this week. So without further ado, let's get on with the service. The reading has been taken from Matthew 3, 1 to 16. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel hair, and he had a leather belt round his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea, and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptised by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to where he was baptising, he said to them, you, blood, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce fruit and keeping repentance, and do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and that every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptise you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan, but to be baptised by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptised by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this for full all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptised, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on his hem. The stars are brightly shining It is the night of our dear Saviour's birth Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope And weary world rejoices For yonder breaks A new and glorious morn For Divine, oh night, when 
when Christ was born. Oh, night divine. Oh, night. Oh, night divine. taught us to love one another His law is love and His gospel is peace Chains He shall break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall see hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise thee with all our hearts we praise his holy name Christ Today we wanted to spend a few minutes uh, to talk about the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit and what does he do? Because we believe, and I'm sure you do believe the same, that the Holy Spirit is a powerful source of strength for us right now. All over the world there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of things that are like seem like they're falling apart, and a lot of things that used to make sense feel like now they don't make sense. But the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit is he knows the way to the future and he walks with us every step of the way. So not only does he know what's ahead of us, but he helps us to get to the good mm -hmm. things that God has planned in advance for us to do. So and we think we've been teaching, uh, talking to our Kingdom Company community about this uh, powerful, powerful truth of who the Holy Spirit is. He is not a thing. He is not a ghost. He's not an it He's not somebody to be scared of. He's not somebody that just jumps on you when you're not expecting <laughs> it, like our dog does sometimes. <laughs> he is a person. He is God. He is a yeah. part of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so I want you to not, if you grew up in church where they didn't talk mm. about the Holy Spirit, then we're going to help you with that. And if you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, we're going to help you with that. And hopefully by the end of this chat, you can ask for more of the Holy Spirit in your life so you can face the tough stuff that is out there just now. I grew up, um, sorry to interrupt you, no, with okay. the Holy Spirit being called a holy mystery, mm. which I think is true, holy and mystery. However, some of that leads you to believe that Holy Spirit comes, goes, right. you know, will-o'-the-wisps in, rests, 
rests in a place then disappears and go yeah. off somewhere else but the bible teaches us that the holy spirit is in everything yeah. so you're not lacking holy spirit you might just be lacking understanding how you can see the holy spirit in everything come on yes the holy spirit is part of all that we do as christians yeah. and the holy spirit is part of the godhead three in one father son and holy spirit as we've heard before but there's a beautiful passage of scripture in Matthew chapter three, which I'll read for you, which just illustrates how powerfully Father, Son and the Holy Spirit work together to for the redemption of mankind. Right. So after his baptism, it says in Matthew chapter three, he's talking about Jesus. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. And settling on him and a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son. He brings me great joy. A powerful verse of just where the Father, Son and Holy Spirit are interacting with each mm -hmm. other to help to help Jesus do the mission that God sent him on earth to do, which is to preach the good news, to help people see that God loves them, to turn away from sin and to say yes to following Jesus into eternal life. The Holy Spirit, like Claire said, lives in believers now and today. Like we we receive Jesus um, when we say yes to following Jesus and we make a commitment and we confess him or we say out loud that he's our Lord and Saviour. We do so by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what scripture teaches us. That's how important the Holy Spirit is. But you will receive power, said Jesus, when he was on his way out of the earth. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit is going to help us finish what Jesus started. Jesus said, it's good for me that I go away yeah. because the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to basically create like <laughs> mini Jesuses that are going to just maximize the sound <laughs> of the gospel so everywhere. Good. Isn't that exciting? So good. That includes you yes. and me and Claire. That we are on mission, powered by the Holy Spirit, to spread the good news everywhere we go. You know, we, we were, we were planning to launch Kingdom Company on the 29th of March. And last time I was with you guys, or the time before last I was with you guys, you prayed for us and you sent us out. And we didn't know that there was going to be a coronavirus. But listen, we're all online now. And now there are billions of people that we can reach digitally online so it's a beautiful time okay. to allow the holy spirit to teach us to reach people digitally because his work is still going on even if we can't meet like we used mm. to the holy spirit gives us the power to live with christ-like character and to do what jesus beautiful. asks so it says in galatians 5 claire's been teaching about this recently and let the holy spirit guide your lives and then you won't be doing what your sinful nature mm. craves the holy spirit who's the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. There's no law against these things. Claire, do you want to say about the fruits? Oh, I love the fruits. I mean, they're the gift, aren't they, of a life submitted and the exchange. So just as Jesus gives you a gift of the Holy Spirit, you give that stuff up so that you can grow in Amazing. the Holy Spirit being active in your life. So to grow in love, you have to give up other things to grow in peace you've got to give something up but that's the flip that's the exchange that Jesus wants to give us that's like how we know we're growing in knowledge of the Holy Spirit because are you more gentle today than you were yesterday then you've grown in your knowledge of the Holy Spirit are you more loving today than you were yesterday then the Holy Spirit is more active in your life we don't want to mystify we need to demystify and simplify what it means to grow in the knowledge and understanding of, of life in the Holy Spirit right and the Holy Spirit is that power to help us change mm -hmm. so that we don't have to sin anymore now because we have the Holy Spirit living within us and we're empowered to make good choices that Jesus would make. Isn't that interesting? So he doesn't just say, Jesus does, doesn't say, go and do all the things I want you to do. He also, by the power of the Holy Spirit, gives us the power to do it. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? That's encouraging for you today. Yeah. Second thing, the Holy Spirit comforts us when we're in pain and corrects us 
when we're off course. Uh, in John chapter 16, he says, when the spirit of truth comes, this is Jesus talking, he will guide you yeah. into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Did you know that? That the Holy Spirit has the ability to communicate what's, what's upcoming in mm. your life. He guides us into a place of truth. So when he's when he prompts us and nudges us to give things up or to change our ways and we feel that nudge and it mm. feels a bit weird, but we, we, we get a sense that it's from God. It's because the Holy Spirit is leading us into the truth because he knows what's best for us, because he knows by the power of God what's coming in our lives and what we need to get ready for. Mm. It's like a, sometimes you just get a knowing. Yeah or a, um, a feeling, a knowing. I just know and I can't describe it, but I just know. And there's peace in that knowing. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. He will bring me glory, says Jesus, by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. And that is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So the Holy Spirit's job is to re uh, report what one of the Holy Spirit's job <laughs> is to report what Jesus and the Father are saying. And so that we can trust when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and reveals things to us and illuminates things to us, that he's, he's doing so not on his own. No, he's not some sort of randomer. He's actually illuminating what the Father is saying okay. so that the Father is speaking to us through the Holy Spirit. You can trust the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but what about if I mishear him? Yeah, but listen, the Holy Spirit will also always lead you into truth. Mm -hmm. So he won't contradict what scripture says and he won't contradict himself. He'll only speak to you that things that are true. So that's how you can know. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it noble? Is it excellent and praiseworthy? Then it's from the Holy Spirit. A couple of more things we want to share with you. The Holy Spirit is a maximizer. He gives us special abilities to make sure we get the job that Jesus started finished and make sure we get it done in the right way. It says this in Corinthians, that there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other you have a spiritual ability a divine impartation is the fancy word of saying it you have a special and significant ability to build up people in your church and it's not your natural aptitude it's a special and significant thing given to the holy spirit and it talks about it in romans talks about it in corinthians but i want to encourage you do you know mm. the gift that god has given you sometimes he gives you more than one gift and we, how do I get them? By asking for them. Scripture tells us if we ask for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that God will give us good things. So do you know what your spiritual gift is? It's so good when you do, because it means that you can help people. You can have a lot of fun doing it and you can maximize your potential okay. in God. God's got more for you today than I think you understand and realize. And the way that you begin to access more of that more is to understand and invite the power of the Holy Spirit and to understand his gifts and crack on with the future and all that God's got for you. The Holy Spirit gives you direction for okay. your best life and courage to take the next step. This is what the scripture means when it says, it says this in Corinthians, no eye has seen and no ear has heard and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And then what happens is most people stay there and go, oh no, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Oh, I can't imagine it. Oh, no. But if you just keep reading a little bit more, this is what it says. In fact, you can read it out. Okay. What does it say? But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. Hang on a minute. So no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no no thought has entered into the heart of man and stand around. Well, God's right. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Good. Where do you think your hope comes from? Where do you yeah, think yeah, those right. desires that God's put in your heart, where do you think they come from? They come from the Holy Spirit. You think, ah, oh, it's too big for me. Yes, yeah, the point. The point is it's too big for you. The point is it just takes your breath away a little bit. The point is it is intimidating because the Holy Spirit put it there and he never designed you to make you do it on your own. He actually wants to walk there with you and empower you to do impossible things. I know. The Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's 
deep secrets. Wow, the Holy Spirit That's shares with us God's great plan. Wow. And the Holy Spirit helps us finally. <laughs> We've gone really quick today. Holy Spirit helps us to belong in community and to see the best in each other. Perfect. One of the things that we're struggling with all over the place at the minute, because we're all on the gram and we're all on TikTok, we're all yeah. comparing our uh, things, is we're struggling with comparison. We're mm. struggling how to see the best in each other without copying each other. You know what I found on, on the interweb? Somebody sent this to me. They sent me a copy of me. Can you believe this? This is Matt Hooper in pop movies it format looks like you. and it's not far <laughs> from the truth this is don't freak out i'll tell, tell you what happened this isn't me of course <laughs> this, i think they get it <laughs> this is there is a character in jaws called matt hooper and uh, your claim to fame I, maybe i was named after <laughs> oh, that's not my dad but this is this is plastic Matt Hooper. And so many times we we are like living life right. in comparison to, or there's copies that we think we have to copy people who are like, there's nobody like you. You cannot be replicated. <laughs> I cannot be replicated and put in a cardboard box. You cannot be replicated. The Holy Spirit wants to do something unique and bespoke and significant through you. You have a, a massive and important part to play in the future of Thriving Life Church and in the future of Northern Ireland and who knows where else. So true. The spirit that you have received, it says in Romans chapter eight, the spirit that you have received from God does not make you serve him like slaves. That would make you afraid again. No, the spirit that God has given to you causes you to become God's children. You are one of God's children today. Now he takes care of you. God's spirit makes us call Abba, our father. We're not talking about the 70s pop group. <laughs> Abba means daddy. It's like a really familiar term of comfortability that when you're comfortable with your dad, you call him daddy. God's spirit himself causes us to know that we are God's children. And God's spirit and our own spirits agree that this is true it is true that if you follow jesus and if you love the lord okay. that you are one of god's children and that the holy spirit lives and dwells in you to affect this world for an eternal purpose That's so good. wow we've covered a lot of material there we went quite quick but i hope that was okay we love you all we're just for you and um, we believe that the Holy Spirit is um, ready and waiting and available. And yeah, you might have to give some stuff up yeah. to grow yeah. uh, in your fruit and in your knowledge, but it's well worth it. Um, yeah, it's a high lifestyle cost being a Christian, but it's really worth Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Let's pray. In fact, let's pray for you. If wherever you are, um, in whatever you can, maybe you've got headphones in, maybe there's some people in the room and you can't say stuff out loud. That's okay. Maybe you're you know that's all right no worries we can do it but just claire uses this word sometimes when we talk to people on digital community she says posture yourself posture means just just do an internal adjustment so that you're ready to receive and then what we'd love to do is to pray that the holy spirit would mm -hmm. fill you up more than ever that, that this next week of your life would be full of a more powerful encounters with people and with god that you would start to see the fruit of God's spirit start to burst out in you, but also that you'd start to understand the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Maybe there's some stuff that's coming against you. Maybe like Claire said, there's some stuff that you feel is holding you back, some fear or some shame or some behaviours that you feel like you're stuck in. The Holy Spirit has the power to break that that power of, of that, that that you feel that you're under he is more powerful than any power that you face so wherever you are um i'll pray and then i'll ask claire to pray just posture or put yourself in a place where um you're ready to receive from god you don't have to close your eyes you can keep them open but let me pray for you holy spirit i pray for every single person who's listening right now oh my thank you for them that they are children of god that they have the spirit of adoption that is they they are they belong somewhere they belong to someone 
And so I pray today that you'd fill them strongly with the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray that they would know your peace, your joy, mm. that they would know your comfort, that the Holy Spirit of truth, that you would lead them into all truth. I feel like there's some people who are struggling with lies that you are hearing over and over again about yourself and the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm the spirit of truth. Let me tell you the truth about who you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Pray for more um, boldness for people, that there's people who are, who are fearful about the future. Maybe you feel like you're shrinking back, but the Holy Spirit gives a spirit of courage, mm. not timidity, not shrinking back. The Holy Spirit gives a spirit of courage. And so, Holy Spirit, would you help them to understand the boldness that you've given each one of those people who are listening today? We pray for loads of fruitful lives this week that people would grow in, in love joy peace patience kindness and gentleness and self-control uh, but we also pray for more and more people to crack on in the gifts that you've given that we would find out what are the gifts that you gave us and that we would start operating in those things in your strong name jesus we pray amen amen holy spirit we invite you close thank you for these few minutes that we've spent together and we thank you that you've been present through all of that. We invite you close and we invite mm. you to um, operate uh, in the power that you have been given and we invite you into our lives mm. and we ask that you help us to be more Christ-like. Mm. We thank you that Jesus, you love us so much that you left us this gift, mm. that you didn't want to make it complicated for us to become like you, that um, you didn't want to make it hard for us, you wanted to make it a, a route that was easy for us to know what it would be like to copy you, to be like mm. you, to, and um, so Holy Spirit, we ask and invite you into our lives and mm. illuminate, show us, guide yeah. us the things yeah. that we need to change, the things that we need to let go of, the things that we yeah. need to be braver in, to grow more in your fruit, and um, we want to live our lives in service to others. So we're grateful for the opportunity that you even want to partner with mm. us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your gift and for your gifts and for your fruit and um we invite you close thank you yeah. father for your son and for your spirit mm -hmm. amen amen you call the sun to See you.